Hello and welcome. This is Sherry with Heart and Sofa back in the studio today with another coffee dyed paper tutorial. So these are the papers that I did yesterday. And so that video is up. I'll put a link down below in the description in case you missed it. But I wanted to create some papers based on a technique that I learned from Mix It Up Marcy. A link to her video is also down in the description. But I did my own experiment with those techniques and to try to see if I can get some uh, busier patterns using things that I had in my kitchen. So if you don't have to have to do these, you didn't have to have any kind of fancy things. I did have some pigments that I used in a couple of them, but you can just raid your spice drawer. Uh, all the other items I used are things that you might already have in the kitchen as well. So today though, I wanna use the same technique, but with different items that I had in my studio. Uh, so I'm going to go over that list in case you haven't watched the other video real quick of the things that you're going to need to do these papers and then a couple of other things that I'm going to add in the experiment I want to do today. So if you're brand new to my channel, welcome. I hope that if you enjoy this video, you'll give me a thumbs up and click on subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. If you'd like a notification when I do post something new, uh, click on the little bell and, and it'll come up in your feed. So. Today, we're gonna to start again with our uh, tray. You wanna make sure again that you have your surface that will be protected uh, from any kind of water and splatters and that sort of thing you can just wipe up. I'm gonna also use this cookie tray. Uh, yesterday, when I did the experiment, I was going to dry these papers on the floor of my studio and I think that's what I'll do today. Uh, I ended up doing them in the oven, all in the tray. So I had just two stacks I don't even know how many, all of these pages were on one tray. So I had two stacks going and I did them in the oven. So you can do them either way. You can you can put them outside in the sunshine if you have that. I am again have snow on the ground so I can't. So just you're gonna just dry these however you normally dry papers that you want a coffee stain or dye. Okay, and then we're gonna just use some regular coffee paper. I didn't go grab more, so I have just kind of what is still sitting here. I need to go grab some more. So you can use any weight. Um, these are, t this is 20 pound, just coffee paper. I have 28 pound and 32 pound. And I actually like using the thicker ones as well because they just make nice sturdy pages. If you're gonna use these for a journal, like this is probably the thickest, the 32 pound. If you're gonna be using these in a journal where you're going to be maybe adding more wood to your your journal pages, then you might want to use the thicker ones. But the, the 20 pound, even the 20 pound thickens up once you've gotten it wet with you know the coffee stain and all the other things we're gonna use. When it dries, it shrinks it back up. So it actually is gonna end up thicker than your original paper. So let me grab some more paper. Okay, so you have your paper pile then. Today, I'm gonna to still be using my coffee. So I'm just, I have a little plastic cup here. Um, I have a brush because I like to brush this one on and also you can kind of just see the consistency of my coffee. You can make it as light or as dark as you want. And to do that, I am just using the cheapest brand instant coffee. I just keep this just for my paper crafting. So you want instant, you don't want used coffee grounds. I also had used, I don't think I'm gonna use this today, but I had also used some matcha green tea just for the green color. And I had made a little dispenser. Just This is just, again, instant tea. So it's going to dissolve and I just made my own shaker by keeping the uh, package closed and then just punching a bunch of little holes at one end. So I don't know that I'll use any of that today. I am also going to use uh, my India ink that's diluted. So this is just black India ink. You can use any brand and you're just going to dilute it. This is going to give us some splatters. Again, depending on how dark you want your splatters you'll uh, maybe not add too much water to this. So it's just kind of what you're looking for. The other thing that I used yesterday that I'm gonna still use again are my Licotex acrylic inks. These are metallics. If you have some mica sprays, those would give you the same kind of effect. This is just to give me some little metallic. And in, in this container, I have used the uh, iridescent rich bronze and the iridescent bright gold and i've just mixed a little of both uh, to get this color again i i don't want this too diluted if i want my little sparkles to you know kind of show up more opaque so uh, again just dilute that however much you want uh, the other thing that i used yesterday that i'm also going to use is some type of acidic 
citrus. This is, I just squeezed some lemons and then I did add a little bit of water to that to dilute it. But you just want something acidic. You can use, again, you can use these little concentrated. Um, this one is a lime, they come in lemon also. You just want some sort of uh, citrus. So you can use these little things also. And then I'm using salt again. I'm gonna, I mostly use this coarse kosher salt because I have it in a shaker. Um, I also have some finer grain salt. So, you know, depending on the fineness of the grain, you could even use like rock salt for ice cream making, and that's even gonna be more coarse. Um, so we're gonna use this to sprinkle and get an effect also. And what else did I use? So today I grabbed the different things that I'm grabbing today are my distress oxides. I, yesterday I used some different spices to get different colors. So you can use turmeric. I used some saffron threads. Uh, you can use Easter dyes or any kind of pigment powders that you might have. Uh, we did that in the experiment yesterday, but today I'm gonna try, I don't have many, but I'm gonna try using some of my distress oxides and see what kind of fun colors and what the oxide, you know, when you introduce that to water, it changes. And so I'm thinking this might have a real interesting look. I'm gonna see what it does. So I've never tried this, so we'll see. Okay, so I'm gonna start these again, just laying two in my tray. And again, I'm not sure how I'll, I'll dry these. I may end up being impatient and putting them in the oven as well. The benefit when you're gonna dry them on uh, like an open garbage bag on the floor like I'm going to is you can kind of crumple up that garbage bag and create wrinkles in it. And then when you lay your paper down to dry, at least on the one side, it's going to leave those wrinkles in your design. And so I kind of like doing that. When you dry them in the oven, you don't get that effect. So I'm gonna do, maybe not do these the same today. I was kind of, you know, mirroring my designs yesterday. So maybe I'll do them different. Uh, so I'm just gonna put some coffee on this one. It's my first, just to kind of stick it down to my tray. So I'm gonna do coffee on this side. And then I did get another brush today so that I could do maybe my black and I don't know. Yeah, this is gonna be pretty gray on this side. So this is my India ink and water that I'm doing here. And again, just to kind of get that to stick down. Again, we're gonna be layering these. So you're gonna get transference from one layer to the next layer. And they're gonna, you know, take on a lot of water by the time you keep adding. You know, we're not making them horribly wet. So if you saw the experiment yesterday and you noticed, it didn't go through from one paper to the next paper to the next paper. It really just transferred to the next one than when it was next to. So it's not like it's soaking through all of them. So I have kind of two different colors going on here. And I think, again, I'm just gonna kind of start with some of that and then maybe I'll do the opposite. Now you can see already what happens. You start to get these little watermarks and I kind of like that. And then you can also use a fan brush, which I forgot to mention, some kind of brush or a toothbrush and create some smaller. And you're seeing how these show up because of the contrast and I'll, I'll hold this up, but you know, there's some acidity in the coffee that's going on top of my ink. And so you really kind of see how that design works out. So I'm not a scientist. If you are, you know how different, you know, chemicals will work together. And so this may all make sense to you that I'm putting something acidic on top of that black ink. And so you're really seeing what happens. Certain things that you do, you don't notice it as much. You do maybe when it dries, but it's really hard maybe for you to see this on camera. So I'm liking how that looks and I'm liking to do a little bit more different size ones. And this is kind of along the lines of what I did yesterday. I'm not really changing up yet and adding anything new. I just am kind of playing again. And you can do as little or as much as you like. So 
for this, if I wanted that to just look like an old piece of paper with a little bit of staining, I could just do it and leave it, you know. But I'm just finding it's fun to kind of just play around and experiment. So I'm gonna just do a little of that. And then the next thing we did, and I'll use this. I need a shaker for this is what I need so that I get it sprinkled around. But when you do add the salt then, you're gonna see how that then reacts and it's gonna even give me more texture. And I don't have too much going on here yet. So let me just add a little and see what we get. And then because I don't have too much going on on this one and there's not a lot of contrast, I'm gonna see if when I do this lemon juice, if that acidity is enough to break down that coffee. And again, this is not showing up at all. We'll see what it ends up in the, in the final thing. Now I'm gonna hold that up close so you can kind of see. So this was really the experiment that we did yesterday. But there will be some reactions there in the texture now that I've added that salt. Okay, so I think the next layer I'm gonna do, so that was kind of the what we did yesterday. And then I'm gonna kind of do this one and add in some of the other items, elements. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that down. And again, I'm gonna go in with my coffee so that it will stay down. And then I really liked that. And this is with the lemon juice. So you can kind of see how it's immediately breaking up that black ink. The other thing that I can use, and I'll do some here too, the other thing that I can use is I do have some inks, but I think I might save that for a different video and just try to stick to adding one thing in for this one. So you can even, you know, lay, roll these around a little bit if you want to get them to move um, to get those kind of streaky lines. So let's see, I'm going to try I'll try, I'll start out with some of these neutrals and I'm not gonna spray this right on it. Um, you probably could, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a little container here. Maybe I'll even just use this little cup. So you wanna shake these and then I'm just gonna spray a little bit in there. Clean my little brush and just see see what happens. I kind of want to just do some of these and see if that the citrus and the salt, how they react to this. And then I'm going to go in and see what happens if I put some of the lemon juice. And you can see it's the oxide, so it's kind of, you know, changing a little bit. But I really like how it makes the edges. So I don't know if that does too much either, but it will give me some other colors. And I can maybe tip my tray and let those run around a little bit. and then add some salt and see what happens. This is what really gives it that lots of texture. So I'm mostly putting it where I put the ink. Just some of this sprinkle here and there. So that hasn't been too much color, but let's see what happens if I do. Now, obviously just because of the color, this one is gonna be less busy, this is gonna have more going on just because of that contrast.
one of the things I can see this doing, and it just may be the order that I did things, you can see how that ink is totally breaking up and looks grainy, and so that's kind of interesting. By the time I do these, I never remember what made what happen, but that's okay. So let's just cover that one up and see what we get next here. So I'm gonna go again with my coffee. You could use tea, you could use a mixture. I just like these neutral backgrounds. They just kind of fit my aesthetic, I guess. Now you can see what I could do, and I think I might do it on one of these, is because this is not really soaking through and I have all this white, over time, this is gonna sit there for a while and it's gonna transfer you know, the inks that you see there, but there may be a lot of white space in between because this paper wasn't wet already. So what I could do is flip this and then we'll maybe add to this. And what ha will happen is I won't have so much white space. You know, I'm still gonna get that transference, but it's gonna have that coffee background. So let's see what happens if I do that. And I'll go ahead and add coffee to this side. But that's how you get some of the papers where you could tell this was a front side where I was putting everything in this. There's a lot of white space. The only part that is stained is what was in contact, in good contact. So you can do these and and flip your paper. Same with this one, there's a lot of white in between. If you put the coffee on and flip your papers, you'll get more of an actual double-sided look, I think. So I'm gonna flip this one too, just to see. I haven't done this before. And this one I'm gonna do maybe some of this, a mixture of these two colors, just for fun. And then I'll go back with my coffee. Okay, now let's pick something maybe more colorful. Peacock feathers, I always love this color. This is, this may all then bleed. I have no idea what's gonna happen, but we'll see. I think I'll go rinse this cup out though. Part of me hates to waste that, but put it in here because I'm afraid to just go straight with it here. This just gives me some more colorful papers, which would be fun. I like neutrals and I like grungy, but I also like a lot of color. So I'm gonna put a lot on this side and maybe just a little bit here. And you can see how it, the little spots are already, because this was already wet, are already really breaking up. But I kind of like that I have those wrinkles in there now. But that's really kind of pretty. Okay, let's see what happens if I add some citrus to that. I think you're gonna notice it more here. Again, you're not seeing this very much on camera, but when I showed you the close-ups after they dry, that's when you really see all of this, this different color and texture. I might as well add it here. So if you can see the light colors, that's from adding the citrus after. So it's breaking up whatever inks and things you have underneath. But you get all of that pattern that's really gonna show up once these dry and I'm kinda gonna tip my tray a little bit. Which that messes up my the little cells that I had just made but I'm gonna add, some of them are still there. I'm gonna add my salt and get that really yummy, crusty texture to this. And it's really gonna set in those creases. But I think you can kind of get the idea of what that's gonna do in the end. So that's fun, I love those colors, that's really pretty. So let's see what else I have here. And I think I'm gonna do the same thing and flip these because if I kind of try to pull this up, I think you'll see that I'm gonna get more of a paper on this backside than I did. So 
again, I'm just gonna get some coffee onto this so that I can flip it. I just love doing these experiments because you don't know how they're going to turn out. And it's funny because yesterday I was, when you, when you do these, you just don't want to stop. You keep going and you're thinking, okay, I'm done. That's enough papers on here. I should stop. And then you, you can't help yourself and you do one more. And I think what happened, and I said it on camera, that that will probably be in, end up being my favorite one the one that I did at the end. And I do, I think it is one of my favorites. Sometimes I'm afraid to use too much black. I think that's why I wanted to try some color today. Just because, I don't know, it's just, I don't want them all black and white looking or black and tan looking or, but it is such a nice contrast. So, and I think those are the things that really help you to see what you're doing. Uh, the technique, having those things react is the more contrast you have, the more it shows up. Uh, so let's see, on this one, maybe I go for something fired brick. That might be really pretty. Now, if I mix it with this, it's gonna end up being some kind of purpley color, which might not be the end of the world. I might just spray it in there and see. So I might end up with a bunch of muddy colors, but. We'll see what kind of weird, it's probably gonna look brown, but. That's me being lazy. And you don't have to just do splatters, you know, you can do, you, you can, you know, do bigger splotchy areas. Those were already kind of soaking in, which is kind of nice. I need something else in this. I don't love that. So I'm gonna use some of my metallic. I haven't used that yet. I still want some contrast in this. So I'm gonna, I need some darker brown. I think I'm gonna use transparent raw umber. I wanna use black. I think, do I have another cup here? No. I think I'm just gonna put some in this because I don't wanna go straight to the, oops, I didn't wanna do that. That's exactly what I did not wanna do. Okay, that's what I was trying to avoid. Okay, mess averted. Okay, that's not exactly what I was going after, but it's going to be fine. Okay, some more lemon juice there. Maybe some metallic on this one. And some kind of big blobs. This one I'm not wild about. It's not broken up enough to me. I'm hoping the salt will do it. But that, the lemon juice, I don't feel like is really breaking up the oxide like I like. But we'll see. Maybe I need a little. This is where I start messing with it too much. Okay, I need to stop, stop myself here. 
If that one turns out being my favorite, I'll be shocked. I actually kind of like how this one is looking just with all this gray and what came up from the previous side. So maybe I don't do too much to that. Famous last words, I know. And I'm really wanting a little of that. Okay, this side. And I need to mix up some more coffee. Now that left me some nice wrinkles. And that I actually kind of like. I almost want to just go back and leave it that way. And get some wrinkles in there. Okay, now the one thing I haven't done is to add just some coffee again. We did this yesterday too. But I'm going to go rinse this out and see what another color might look like. Okay, so the fired brick really wasn't great because I had mixed it. So maybe I'll try that again. It's kind of pinky looking. Let's see. Wild honey's kind of subtle, but that might be pretty. I'm half tempted to just spray it on that one, but I'm scared. Of course, I always say no pain, no gain, right? So I shouldn't be afraid. I should just try. It's so subtle by the time it's on here and introduced to water. And I think adding so many other things. And I think some metallic. Okay, and I really kind of want to do something contrasty to this. But without it being dry, it's just gonna mix. So I don't really want to do that. So let's just go and add my citrus and see if I get any nice spots. These are all still looking kind of neutral to me. And I'm thinking probably the inks would be more bold. But you know, they're gonna, these, I don't know, they're gonna be kind of interesting backgrounds. Let's see what happens if I leave this, not smooshing anything around. This is just vintage photo. I'm just gonna see what happens if I spray in these white spots. This is just water just because I don't really want that white background. So I'm just gonna But you can see where I did the spray. It is gonna do its own little thing in there. Of course, doing that messed up all my citrus. So I wanna go back and see if I can create some of those white cell looking areas again and i know you can't see them but there are some there and then i'm going to go back with the salt and see how these come out so because i have all these wrinkles you know it's going to continue to wrinkle up which i really kind of like so this one i'm going to start again with coffee I think doing the oxides, it's nice to have it already wet. I'm gonna see what that's like.
And I'm gonna do hickory smoke just for, because it's gray. And I'm gonna go ahead and just spray that on. I don't know if you can see how this is going to be in here. It's going to be really pretty. Okay. And then I think I want to do some black splatters on this. And it's so diluted that they're very gray. I had never done this before. Ordered an, um, from Tim Holtz. You can, when they come out with a new color, you can order the entire, all the different things. I've never done that before, but I did on this one because I think I was really gonna like it. And then it will get me to try some of the products I've never tried before. So this is, I don't know that I have any Distress inks. I have the spray one, some of the spray ones I think, but this is the Distress ink and in Scorched Timber. So I'm gonna clean this out because I think it's gonna have a decent contrast. And I could just, let's see. We'll see what's gonna happen here. I think I wanna just use some citrus and see what happens. It's not really breaking it up like it does the India ink. It, at all. Just created a huge mess. I think I would have been better to dilute this and just splatter it, but we're going to see. It's an experiment. I can always go in afterwards with white or something and splat, make white splatters. Um, let's see if I spray. That will break it up. So this is just the hickory smoke. Okay, who knows what that one's gonna look like, but we're gonna hope we have a happy accident.
Okay, I'm back and I have cleaned all of the salt and everything off of these, which was no joke. This is my sponge. The only time I've used this was yesterday to do this batch of papers, which is even less. And then I used it today for, I think we counted maybe 18 papers. So you'll, you'll use this up. So I actually had just cut it off of a larger one. So now I have another sponge to use. But anyway, so I am so thrilled with how these turned out. I'm really sad that this came off of this, but I'm gonna see if I can show you these now after they're sanded. Um, and then I'm gonna scan these, I think, and maybe compare scanning versus photographing them with my phone just to see what comes out with more detail. But I'm thinking this might be fun to make some more even and then pull my favorites and make a little digital kit. So I don't know if you can see all of that texture that stays behind, if I have a shadow here. But they're just gorgeous, gorgeous if you like grungy things. So I'll just flip through these so you can kind of see. But even the, even the light ones, there's a lot of texture there. I love this color. It's kind of my, kind of beachy colors. And then there's some that have a busier pattern with more splatters and then kind of more plain, but you can still see lots of texture. This one has a lot of metallic, but you can't really see it on camera. And even the dark ones, you know, they look pretty grungy. I think they look better in real life. Maybe I'll try to do some nice close-up photos and do like a little short video or something with just some close-ups. Did I show the back side of that? Yeah. You can just see how these look like little cells, little spider webby. Just so pretty. This one I tore, but again, just lots of texture. And they feel really good. You know, the papers are really thick. I did tear this one, but they're um, nice and thick. These are a little fragile maybe where they creased. But the nice thing is I can scan these and print them on whatever I want. And then they won't be fragile at all. It'll just be cardstock or whatever I print them on. So I really feel like I have to keep playing just because I don't know. I want to get more daring, I think. And you just never know how they turn out. Like, I love this one. And I wasn't sure I was going to like spraying it on like I did. And then using the citrus really kind of spread it out and adding ink. And even those back sides. I mean, that looks great. And that's what you really don't know how those are going to turn out because you don't even get to see them until they're finished drying and that's backside again i really like this one too i think this is my favorite okay well that's my share for today i hope you'll go play i'm gonna pull my pan out again i just think that's so much fun and i just want to maybe try even more color and see what i get so that's it for today again have a great rest of your day and i can make something bye